Hey, welcome back, and thank you for coming back again, uh, Teacher K French. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I so appreciate you. Uh, let's start with some temperatures or some quick review here. Normal body temperature in Fahrenheit. Can I hear you? Can I hear you loud and clear? That's right, 98.6 degrees. Remember, this little circle means degrees, 98.6 degrees. All right, what's the boiling point? This is when you put your macaroni and cheese on the stove and you want it to bring to a boil. What's the boiling point in Fahrenheit? 212 degrees. What is the freezing point? So this is when you put your water in the freezer and you want to make ice. The freezing point of Fahrenheit, 32 degrees. So now let's do the normal body temperature in Celsius. All right, so in Fahrenheit, it's 98.6. In Celsius, it's 37 degrees. All right, the boiling point of water in Celsius, it's 212 degrees in Fahrenheit, but in Celsius, it is 100 degrees. Very good. Now, the freezing point in Celsius, remember, it's 32 degrees Fahrenheit, but 32 degrees Fahrenheit is the same as 0 degrees Celsius. Now, we have these formulas that we practiced, Celsius to Fahrenheit. Remember, Fahrenheit equals 9 fifths times C plus 32. So this is Celsius to Fahrenheit. So when they give us a Celsius value, we'll put it here at this, here in the C, and Fahrenheit, F equals Fahrenheit equals 9 fifths times C plus 32. And then when they give us the Fahrenheit value, and we want to go to Celsius, it's 5 ninths times parentheses Fahrenheit minus 32. And remember, we take the value of Fahrenheit, plug it in here, and then we subtract our 32. We do the parentheses first, and then we multiply it by 5 ninths. So from Fahrenheit to Celsius, so they gave us the Fahrenheit value. We're looking for C, Celsius. So C equals 5 ninths times F minus 32. Just some good things to keep a review on. Uh, last off, we left off at adding and subtracting of decimals. So I wrote a few problems here, 0.732. 1.68. Notice my decimals are all lined up. When we add and subtract to decimals, we want to make sure we have the same number of digits past the decimal. So I need to add a zero here. Remember adding and taking away a zero doesn't change the value. You can see I added a zero. Let's put one right there and one right here. Now we can go with adding. We need to bring our decimals straight down. It needs to stay in a line. Now we start with the farthest column over, which in this case it's the uh, thousandths place, tenths, hundredths, thousandths. So let's start over here. 2 plus 0 plus 7 plus 0, 9. Here we have 3 plus 8 plus 9. Well, 3 plus 8 is 11, so plus 9 gives us 20. Now we have, I can look here, I have a 8 plus 2 is 10, so I have 10, I have 16. 17, 18, and 18 plus 7 will give me 25. Carry a 2. 2 plus 1 is 3, plus 6, 9. All right, let's go over here and do our subtraction problem. Again, I want to have the same number of digits, so I need to add a, put a 0 and a 0. Again, that 0 does not change the value. Um, so we need to start here. We have the 10 thousandths. All right, so thousands, ten thousand. So I need to borrow. Oops, oops, if I open my marker. I can't take three from zero. So I'm going to take it by the, from the next whole number, which is going to be, make that an 89. Make that a 10. So 10 minus 3 is 7. 9 minus 2, or 9 minus 7 is 2. What did I forget to do? Right, I need to bring down my decimal just so I don't forget to do it in my answer. All right, let's go back to here. Can I take 9 from 8? No, let's borrow. Make this an old 1. 18 minus 9, 9. Let's borrow from this 4 and make it a 3. Now make that an 11. 11 minus 8 gives me 3. 6 minus, all right, got to make that a 0. Make this 13 be 7. 5, 7. There would be your final answer. Again, adding and subtracting decimals, we bring the decimal straight down. It must be in line. Now, we're going to multiply 
decimals today. All right, so we're going to multiply. So in adding and subtracting, decimals come straight down. I want to make sure I have the same number of digits. But now we're going to multiply. All right, and it's not much different than regular multiplication, and I'll show you here in just a minute. Here, if I have 8.432 times 7, I now need to count my decimal places for in my answer. So here I have one, two, three decimal places. Here I do not have any decimal places because I have a whole number. So total in my answer, I had my answer should have to the third decimal point. All right, I need three places for my decimal point. Now I can multiply. Seven times two, 14. Seven times three, 21 plus one. 22, 28 plus 2 is 30, 7 times 8 is 56, plus 3 is 59. Now, my answer is not done yet. Remember, I need three decimal places. So here's the whole number, and I like to go 1, 2, 3. So my answer is 59.024. All right, let's look at a few more. All right, if you have 1.83 times 0.25, let's count our decimal places. This, is, this one has two. Now notice I have two right here, one, two. So now how many decimal places do you think I'm going to need? Because I have two plus two, my answer will have four. All right, now I go back to, now I do my normal multiplication. Five times three, 15. Five times eight is 40, plus one is 41. Five times one is five, plus four, nine. I still put my space holder. Now I start with the second column. Two times three is six. Two times eight is 16. Two times, two, two times one is two, plus one is three. Now I add my partial products. Five plus zero, one plus six, 9 plus 6, 1 plus 3, 4. Now I have four decimal places, remember? So I start here, my whole number, 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'd make sure my answer is 0.457. All right, again, let's do a couple more. All right. 0 0.106 times 0 0.08. Let's count our decimal places. One, two, three. One, two. So now we're going to go out five decimal places. It's always important that you kind of do that. It makes, uh, makes your math visual and helps you not to forget to put the decimal in your answer. All right, or in your product here. So we have eight times six is 48. 8 times 0 is 0, but I have this 4. 8 times 1, 8. Now, I put a 0 here, but notice I'm going to have all zeros. All right, so 8, 4, 8, 0, and I need five decimal places. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That means I need to add a 0 there. And it changes this place value, 0 0.00848. All right, I'm going to leave two problems with you for you to practice, and we'll check them next time. I'm going to give you 5.2 times 4. All right, then I'm going to give you 0.765 times point one one all right so I'm gonna leave you those make sure you count your decimal places and make sure you add your decimal to your product again I thank you for watching and I'll see you soon bye bye